In my last video, I showed you how to photograph art using studio strobes. Now, let's talk about editing those images. Welcome back to the Visual Center. I'm Carlos, and today we're editing in Lightroom. There are a lot of different programs you can use for editing, and each one has a varied method. But since I tethered into Lightroom last time, that's what I'll be using. So let's jump into it. Now previously, I went through all my images and I decided which ones I wanted to use by zooming in and looking at the sharpness and, and seeing if the light was even. And I settled on uh, this image. I'm also going to need to use this image of the color checker in order to do some color correction. So let's select this image and let's move over to the develop module. The first thing that I'll want to do is enable my lens profile which will correct any natural barrel distortion or vignetting that is characteristic of the lens that I used. You can find that down in the lens corrections panel. And if you make sure you're on the profile tab, you can click on this little box that says enable profile corrections. And when you'll click it, you'll see if I turn this off and on, you can see that there's a slight adjustment that Lightroom makes with that profile. Next, let's adjust any keystoning distortion that there might be. And for that, I'm gonna to go to the transform panel, which is down here. And I'll use the guided upright tool. Now this method is often used in real estate photography to make sure the perspective of a room is perfectly straight. I'm going to use that same technique here to make sure that the painting is perfectly straight. Click on the tool and your mouse will turn into a crosshair with a zoomed in preview attached to it. What you want to do is find the edge of your painting and put that crosshair right on that edge. And then what you want to do is click and drag. And when you do that, it's going to drop an anchor point where you clicked. And as you're dragging, there'll be another anchor point. And what you want to do is go along the edge of the painting and drop another anchor point on that edge. So something like that. And if you're not perfect at it, that's okay. You can always go back to the anchor points and you can grab them again and make adjustments and get that right on the edge. Okay, um, and then the next thing you want to do is do that again on the uh, parallel edge. Uh, you're going to drop an anchor point right there on the edge of the painting, click and drag, and drop another anchor point on the edge. And what Lightroom will do, it'll, it'll take the, the anchor points and the lines that are connecting them between these two parallel lines, and it'll try to make these two edges of the painting completely parallel. So you can kind of see what that's doing here if I turn it off and on. You can see it's straightening the painting there. Now to make it perfectly straight, I want to do that four times. So top and bottom and left and right. So I did top and bottom. So if I click on the tool again here, I can do left and right now. So drop an anchor point on the edge right there and there and I'll come to this side click drag I'm gonna be less precise on this side just because I can go back and adjust that and try to make it perfect Okay, and if I turn this off and on, you can see the difference that that's making. So now I know that my painting is perfectly 
straight and parallel and it fixed that really minor distortion that was going on. Now that my painting has been straightened, I no longer need this excess space around the painting. So I'm going to crop that out with the crop tool. And here in the options, I can select an aspect ratio. Now I measured my painting and I know that it's perfectly square, so I can use the one to one ratio. If your artwork is a common ratio, you can use any of these presets that they have in here. They have some pretty common ratios here. If your artwork is not a common ratio, you can always enter a custom ratio. You can do that by clicking on this menu, hitting enter custom, and you don't have to do the math. Lightroom will do the math for you. Just measure your, uh, your artwork and punch in the dimensions here. This is width and then this is height. So if you did uh, a painting that was 11 by 17, you can type in 11 by 17 and then just hit OK and it'll remember that ratio. Okay, and it'll enter them down here. And you'll get a few uh, custom ones down here that you can pick from um, as you use the program. But I'm gonna go back to my one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm just gonna adjust this right to the edge of the painting. I'm probably going to come in just a little bit to make sure that there's no excess white space. And there we go. Now we can move on to touching up the image and I'm going to start with adding a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to go up to the detail panel and I'm going to increase the amount and the radius. However, when you're doing this, what you want to do is make sure that you're zoomed in. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, if I open this panel up here, you can see I'm zoomed into 200%. Um, default, I think it's going to be 100%, but I like to go a little bit more when I'm sharpening just so I can see some of the detail edges. Um, and then I also like to set this little preview window. You can click on this little icon here and then pick an area in your image that you want to focus on. So I'm just going to click that which will set this window. That way you can see what's going on when you're moving your sharpening sliders. Okay, so I'm just gonna increase the amount a little bit and a little bit of the radius as well. And if I do a before and after, well, I'll just turn this off and on, this effect. You can see that it's bringing out a lot of details. Now I don't have any set numbers that I use for sharpening. I just kind of go until it looks good. Um, you do want to be careful. You can go too far. You don't want to sharpen it too much um, or else it looks a little weird and funky. Next, let's do some dust and blemish touch up. Now this step is going to take the longest. For purposes of time, I'm not going to go through my whole process. I'm just going to show you how the tool works. But just remember that you want to take your time with this one and it could you could easily spend a good hour or two doing this step. So up here we have the spot removal tool. So I'm going to start there. And with these sliders, you can adjust the size and the feather and the opacity of the brush. So if I just move this, you can see that my brush gets bigger and bigger. If I move the feather, I don't know if you can see it, it's hiding a little bit. If I bring my mouse over here, back to lats zoom over to this black area just so you can see my mouse. Uh, if I increase the feather, there's an outer circle on the cursor. So this is 100% feathered. You can see the outer circle is larger than no outer circle, circle at all and then something in between. So I'm just going to add a little bit of feather. And to adjust my size, I can also scroll with my mouse. If I scroll up and down, I can change the size of my brush. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down the space bar so that I can use my mouse to scroll around. And I'm just gonna be looking for dust spots or, or blemishes on the painting. For, for an example, there's these little paint chips in here is something that I can clean up. 
And this is something that you'll want to talk with the artist about if it isn't your artwork. Talk with them and, and, and find out what exactly they want cleaned up. Um, there might be some nicks in the paint uh, that you might think you should clean up, but the artist might actually want those to be there. Um, so make sure you have that conversation with them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale my mouse to about the size and I'm just going to click. And what Lightroom does is it samples from an area. Now, sometimes it doesn't grab the right spot per se. Um, so you can always grab that and tell it to sample from somewhere else. Um, that was an okay sampling, so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, but that's what you would do. You kind of go through, find these blemishes, click. Um, and that's what you would do. You spend a good hour or two uh, going through and, and spotting this. Um, sometimes you'll come across something that's a little bit larger. Uh, let me zoom over here. Um, there's a spot over here behind the head that kind of looks like a water spot, but um, I'm going to make this a little bit larger and I can grab that. Um, now it's grabbing an edge of the hair, so I'm just going to scoot that over just a little bit and we'll scoot this over here. Okay, so that fixes that. Um, when you're doing this, a lot of times what will happen is you'll have all these little dots on here from the work that you've been doing. If that ever gets in the way uh, of how things look or you're having trouble seeing kind of like what you've been working on, uh, you can always hit the H key on your keyboard and that'll hide those. Okay, and that'll toggle them kind of off and on. It's just sometimes when I'm I'm doing this kind of work, uh, I get hundreds of little dots on there, and it's kind of hard to see my image through all those little dots. So if I do if I do H, I can hide those and keep working. Okay, let me zoom back in. The hat here we have um, some dust specks and some more little water spot things. Another thing you can, you can do with this is you don't have to just click one little spot. You can also paint with it. So if I make this smaller, I can paint the shape of this little dust hair here. Okay, and if I turn that back on, you can see it sampled way down here. I'm going to bring this up to somewhere closer. And that's what you'll want to do. You'll just want to spend maybe a good hour or two just going through the painting all zoomed in and looking for those dust spots or blemishes on the painting and spot removing them. Next, I'm ready to start adjusting the color. And when you adjust the color with doing copy work, it's a good idea to have the original painting on hand uh, so that you can match the colors with what you see. Okay, so I'm going to set that over here so I can see it. Now the first thing I want to do is apply the correct color profile. And I used this image to create a custom color profile specific to this model of camera. To learn how to do that, I'll have another video showing you how. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can be notified whenever the new videos come out. Okay, let me first use this image to show you why having a custom profile would be important. I'm going to zoom in on these color patches here. And then I'm going to go up to the basic panel. And then right here you have a profile. And by default, Lightroom uses a color profile called Adobe Color, which is an okay profile, but you'll see the difference here. Um, I've gone ahead and made a custom profile for the camera that I'm using, this Nikon D750. And when I click on that, you'll notice a change in the colors. Did you see it? If I go back and forth here, let's go back to my history. So that's the Adobe color and the custom profile. You can see that there's a lot more saturation in these color patches with the custom profile. So there's a vibrancy to these colors that I'm missing in the default settings. And this custom profile brings that out, especially in these blue patches 
a little bit in the reds and the purples. You can see that difference. Now that's really important, especially to my painting, because in the background of my painting, I have these magentas and blues um, and, and these uh, bluish greens um, and these purple colors in here. Uh, and so those colors are really important to bring out with the custom profile. Okay, so that kind of illustrates um, kind of the benefit of having a custom color profile. Uh, I have those new colors to work with, okay, or those more vibrant colors. So let's jump back over to my painting. Zoom out here, and I'm gonna apply this color profile. Okay, so you can see already that made a big difference in the vibrancy of the color. Now what you wanna do at this point is, is kind of sit back away from the computer, hands off, um, and grab the original painting and do a visual comparison um, at this point and just do an analysis. And as I'm looking at this painting, what I'm noticing is that overall my image in Lightroom is a little bit warmer and the skin tones are a little bit brighter and more vibrant um, than they should be. In the original painting, they seem to be a little bit, uh, a little bit darker than what I have on my screen here and also a little bit cooler. So I need to bring out those cool tones and I also need to uh, bring down the brightness in some of the highlight areas, okay? So one thing I can do to make it cooler is I can mess with the color temperature and I can just bring that more towards the blue. Not by much, just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in to look at the skin tones here, and I'm going to start messing with those. Another thing you can do to mess with specific colors, if I scroll down here, I can go to the HSL color panel. And I have specific colors that I can work with. Um, now, looking at my original painting, there's a lot more um, maybe subtle blues, maybe a little bit of green in the skin tone that I'm not seeing on my screen. Um, so I wanna bring those out a little bit. Um, and it's feeling a little bit warm. So maybe I'll go to like my reds or my oranges. And something that I do with this uh, panel is I'll go to the extremes and just kind of see how it's affecting the image. I'll just grab the slider and I'll just move it up and down like crazy so I can see what's being affected. Okay, and then I'll just double click and go back to my default. And maybe I will make the oranges just a little bit more yellow, or maybe tone down their saturation, and maybe torn down their brightness a little bit as well. Okay, and then I'll go to my reds. The reds are part of the warm colors too, so maybe Pull those a little bit more red, a little bit less saturated, and bring the brightness down on those as well. Okay, and then maybe go into my yellows, and let's see what's going on with my yellows. Okay, look at my painting. Looks like there should be a bit more warmer yellow here and there. And let's see if it's affecting those areas. It is, so let's grab those. And it's kind of a warmish yellow, so I'll kind of keep it in this area. Um, but maybe I'll make them a little bit, mm, not quite brighter, but maybe a little bit more saturated so that they're a little bit more visible. That looks good. Okay, I'm not seeing a whole lot of greens in this painting, but we can see yeah, so if I move this slider around, I'm not really seeing anything. Mostly over here. So I think I'm gonna use my leave my green slider alone. I'll go to cyan. And I just do this for each one and see how it affects the overall image. Okay, and now that coloring is looking a lot 
better. Um, but now I, I have the issue of um, these, this, especially in this skin tone area, it just feels too bright when compared to the original painting. So I just want to bring down the highlights a little bit. If I go to my basic panel, I can go to my highlights and I do the same thing that I do with colors. I just move that slider back and forth just so I can see what area it's affecting. And let's look at the whole painting and see if, whoops, highlights. Let's see if it's affecting the background. I think I'm okay with what it's doing to the background. So I'll go ahead and start to bring that down a little bit. Okay, and then maybe I'll bring my whites down. So if I do this, you can see everything gets a little bit darker and that's kind of what I'm going for. So I think I will just pull my white slider down. Maybe something like that. And I can do a before and after. So if I hit Y on my keyboard, you can see this is before, this is after. And I can look at my painting. Yeah, skin area still needs to be a little bit darker. I think I'm okay with everything else in here. Um, so let's go up to the adjustment brush here. And this will allow me to do uh, localized areas. Let me zoom in and I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here by collapsing these parts of Lightroom. Okay. Give myself kind of a bigger brush and then I'm just going to start painting in this area. If you ever need to see exactly where you're painting, uh, what you can do is hit the O on your keyboard and it'll give you this red mask. And so this red area is where uh, the affected area is gonna be. Okay, and if you do too much, hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard and you get the minus brush and you can kind of dial that back. I do need this white area up here. Just not all the way up there. Okay, now the adjustment brush controls look a lot like the basic panel, but it's separate from the basic panel. It's just gonna affect this one area. Gotta hit O on the keyboard to turn off that overlay. Um, and then here, we just set these all back to the default. And I think I'll just bring the overall exposure down a little bit on the skin tones. And maybe bring the whites down as well. Always looking at my painting and comparing. Maybe bring the highlights up as I bring the whites down. Let's see, let's bring a little bit more cool tones out. So I want to be careful doing this because it might affect the color changes that I made earlier. So just keep an eye on it, but I'm just going to cool everything down just a little bit. And now it's looking, I think, too purple. So I think I did too much there. So let's bring that back. Maybe just a little bit there and add a little bit of green. there and still just a little too bright so maybe bring the exposure down just a little bit or maybe bring the highlights down Okay, I think that's looking good. 
And if I turn this off and on, you can see the change that this made. And to you, on your screen, this might start to look a little bit muddier. Um, but when I compare it to the original painting, it looks a lot more accurate. So that's what I'm going for is, is getting it accurate to the original painting, not what I would like to see on the screen. So that's really, really important when you're doing copy work. And once you're done with the adjustment brush, you can just click on that to close that control. And once you have the color dialed in, you're done. You're ready to export your file and send it to your client. Or if this is your painting, you're ready to upload it to your website or make a print from it. I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions or if there's any other videos that you want to see, put those in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about how to use Lightroom, stay tuned. Trent will be making some videos to teach you how. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. There are a lot of different so make sure you use this and hit the bell. Hit, hit the bell. Hit, hit the bell. Hit the bell. And each one. Ugh.